We'll start off with Leah and talking about gardening resources. Microphone. <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, so today we wanted to um, have a little bit more of an informal session. Um, we like to um, wrap up the last day um, in a more casual way that involves more discussion. So the topic that I am going to talk about is low cost and low impact gardening, um, gardening resources. And when I was trying to think about how to talk about it, I just figured I would tell you a little story about some of my gardening experiences. Uh, some of the folks here um, took some time to make some videos and I'm afraid video making isn't in my skill set, but I thought I'd pull a few pictures out of my photo album um, to talk about how I approached gardening um, at times when I didn't necessarily um, have a lot of money to do it and I wanted to do it in a way that didn't create a lot of uh, a lot of waste. Uh, so this is my this is my garden site for my third year of gardening. So my first year of gardening, I had two raised beds, each maybe like three by six. That was my first year. My second year of gardening, I had a garden plot in the ground that was maybe ten feet by six feet. And then my third year of gardening. I moved into a new place and that had a big open sunny space and um, and that was it. <laughs> and so um, when we got there, um, we knew that we had to um, create some fertile soil. And so we were able to round up um, some uh, composted manure from a um, horse farm. And so we were, because when we, when we were thinking, how could we possibly spread an inch of <laughs> compost over this large garden? we thought, how are we ever going to afford, we can't afford to buy a big pile of compost from uh, one of those places that delivers it. So we were able to get that as a free resource. And then when we were moving out, a neighbor was giving away uh, they were giving away fence posts and old fencing. So we thought, well, maybe that will work for, maybe that will work for a fence. And, but once we spread it out, even though that was like a free resource and we were excited to be able to reuse something that, uh, that our neighbors were giving away, um, when we moved in, the first thing we saw were deer lying underneath the window and we thought, oh no, <laughs> we're going to need a much taller fence around our garden. Just keeping out the rabbits isn't going to be enough. And when we laid out the fence all the way around the garden, it just wasn't tall enough. It just was only like five, six feet tall. It wasn't, um, it wasn't tall enough. And so at that time there was a, a storm that came through and knocked down a whole bunch of trees and branches on a friend's property. So we um, built arches that came up above the fence um, and used just like free materials to make the fence taller. It ended up, we ended up being really happy with it. We ended up feeling like it had more character than it probably would have if we had just uh, actually been able to afford to go buy the, the fence posts that were tall enough or uh, if we were, um, you know, making it, making it solid. So we were pretty happy with that. And we were able to make it out of materials that we were able to find. In fact, next slide. That is not the next slide. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, well, the next slide disappeared. All right, you can go back to the fence. <sighs> It happens. So in fact, we ended up being able to use the branches for several, um, for several other um, uses. We were able to use the branches for, um, for tomato. We were able to, with screws and with, um, and with branches, we were able to make tomato fences. We were able to make bean towers. Um, and so just out of things that were lying around, we were able to fill in a lot of the gaps that we needed to provide support for our garden as well. So I guess those pictures may have disappeared somewhere. Um, 
the other um, slide that I do not see there that I will now tell you about is then when we moved into the next house, uh, we, uh, we also had basically had to start over. And in that house, we didn't know where we were going to um, start our seeds. And so um, when we were driving down the road, uh, my husband noticed that there was a little old fiber fiberglass greenhouse that was covered with moss. And he said, that's a really good sign that nobody's using that anymore. And so we, um, we went and we talked to the neighbors and said, you know, maybe we could buy this from you. We had no idea what they would say about how much it would cost. And they just said, no, you know what? We're not using it anymore. If you clean it out, you can have it. Um, so although they did, I, I guess I can say this in, uh, in this class, they did give us a little bit of a sideways look and wanted to make sure that we weren't doing anything illegal in there, which we swore we were not doing anything illegal. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we were able to get some friends, bring it home, clean it out. And we actually got a lot of useful pots and trays out of it that we were also used to this day. Um, we also, um, so at the end of the summer, we brought the family a pie and we also brought them some produce to show them that in fact we had used it for good purposes. <laughs> All right, now you can go to that slide. So sometimes just, um, just asking for things uh, can be a great way to find things. And I wanted, um, once we were able to grow um, a whole bunch of um, starts in that greenhouse, then all of a sudden we had something to share or to trade. And so um, I know one of my favorite ways to get resources from my garden now is to share when I have extra and to, um, and then take things from other people who maybe when they have extra. So it's nice when gardening doesn't have to be all about buying things. I mean, I can go to some of the nurseries in town and think of thousands of dollars of things that I want to buy, but for the most part, I don't actually need to because um, the, the, I wanted to show this picture. These are actually the Egyptian walking onions that Jennifer and I uh, were talking about earlier. Jennifer posted a picture of them, said she had some extra to share, and I came and picked some up. So now I have a tub for them. And then the, uh, the peppers here are actually peppers that Shiko is giving away, who's also a master gardener on this call. Um, she, uh, she also, like me, grows peppers and is willing to share when she has more than she needs. Um, I actually got knowledge from her by when she, when she um, share, offered these through social media because um, she grew a variety called Staten Select, which is a, a bell pepper variety that does well in cold climates. It's one of my favorite peppers to grow and she was growing it. So I got the knowledge of where to get the seeds for that particular variety. So sharing can be, um, sharing can be objects or it can be plants or it can be your, just your knowledge of how to grow a particular thing. And I think being part of a community that trades those things um, is a, um, a great way to, um, to get what you need without spending money and also to build community through gardening, which is one of my favorite things about gardening in Corvallis. So uh, next slide. Uh, we, I believe, in, um, were able to uh, provide with, with you in your packet um, the Corvallis Garden Resource Guide. If you weren't, um, if you didn't get a copy, there, it's also possible to download a PDF um, of this. So beyond the things that you can scrounge like me or that you can share and trade, uh, there are also a number of locations around town where you can um, find many of the things you need um, for gardening. So this is a great resource if you're new to gardening and you're thinking where to look, where to find things. Uh, the, the Garden Resource Guide 